Welcome to Belco Productions presentation of the Lake Marshall Open. This is round one front nine of this PDGA B tier presented by Knowledge Management Incorporated. Additionally, this video is sponsored by Mike Evans. Thank you so much to those sponsors. They make this course, tournament, and video coverage possible. I'm Andrew Fish, joined here by Matt Hammerston. Nice to be here. Looking forward to uh, watching you guys shred up the round one. Yeah, so we're on the Lions course, which is one of three courses here, and we'll be following Zach Melton from Kingsport, Tennessee, representing Dynamic Discs. We have Sam Shiley representing Prodigy Disc Golf from White Post, Virginia. Cody Bradshaw, the always colorful, comparative local from Spotsy, Virginia, representing Discraft. And we have yourself, Andrew Fish, representing Discraft and Upper Park Design. So I'm looking forward to this. This is uh, on the Lions course, and if you haven't heard of Lake Marshall yet, get to know it. Um, this, this I really think is one of the best modern disc golf designs on the East Coast, maybe yeah. in, maybe in the in the country or world. Yeah, I think this is what golf looks like for disc golf. Yeah, absolutely. It's gonna it's gonna challenge all kinds of shapes, discs, landing spots, and uh, really. It's, it's designed with the 10, 20 plus player in mind. Absolutely. And we thank the Spotsy Disc Golf Club for sponsoring the Lions course for the for this entire tournament. Yeah, off the whole, off the tee on this hole, it, anything left is massive danger. So you kind of want to make sure you're going right. For sure. Zach's going to get a nice little tap back out to the fairway, and he stays on the flat. I think the real key to this hole is that you have to bite off enough with each shot while also staying um, kind of on the high spot. We're going to play over a couple valleys. The first one is inbounds. The other one is a no penalty hazard. You just take it back on the line of play. Really interested to see how much Sam's trying to bite off here. For sure. He's got a ton of power, right? Absolutely. I've seen him soft hyzer throw a 600 foot shot and it was just <laughs> incredible. So seems like he dials it back a little bit to get the shape in the shape correct and uh, ends up in a very nice landing spot after a soft right turn. Cody's got a good amount of power as well. You see how much he wants to bite off as well. Yeah, I would think that following Sam's line is just about ideal. And either too much turn or not enough height. That's a fine spot though. That And I think that's a common mistake because you really want to make sure you stay right. Yeah, no doubt. What are you throwing here? Uh, this is a kind of beat Z force. Objective being to follow those guys, start on the left side, break it to the right. Anything after that is gravy. And that pine that you just passed, that's in like the perfect spot to <laughs> grab discs. Right, it's it's where you're, you know, I guess where I'm really trying to break the disc to the right, probably at 280 to 300 off the tee. And this is aggressive by Zach. He's way far back on the fairway and is trying to carry, carry the second valley and does so successfully. Yeah, that's a big shot. Um, kind of, already he's scrambling a little bit and giving himself a chance to save a birdie. I kind of feel like this hole is relatively simple to par, but if you're trying to go for birdie and you're out of position, it can bring a bogey fast. Yeah, I think that's true. Um, I, I think there's several holes out here that are very much like that, where you know the par play is... You know, you could throw four mid ranges, 240 feet, and be right on it. Um, but if you're going for anything more, you have to throw a faster disc on a more aggressive uh, line and shape. And I did not realize that this could be eagled. <laughs> I'm not sure I did either. You know, I'm I'm looking at this distance and thinking I can't do 970 in two shots. Um, Trey Hamlet, the course designer, was doing the catch cam for this event. And I wouldn't be surprised if he saw this and said, all right, I'm moving the darn thing back again. That's not giving him, him an idea. Right. <laughs> so Sam having to take that no penalty hazard, the same that Cody had to. 
and it's really hard to get positive distance when you're stuck in that hole. Yeah, you can kind of see both of their discs, really. Um, just the second they got past that hill, the nose was just very up and just hides it out real early on them. Right, but even so, that left side is fairly cleared out. It's not hard to work your way in and out. Zach, very nice approach. He'll be taking a tap and birdie to start his tournament. Yeah, and to your point, Cody has a simple jump putt approach. Mm -hmm. Does a nice job to get himself to the circle. Sam with kind of the sh kind of the same. Do you think he was gonna run that? I wouldn't think so. There's a there's a downslope behind the basket, and I mean, even for me with an eagle opportunity, I'm I'm very committed to a birdie if I'm not taking an eagle. Right. Yikes. That's just unfortunate. Yeah. He. he you can he, be critical and say it was a little low. Hit the basket before the chains and sometimes it does that but yeah you know if that's a 75 percent putt he he uh came out at the wrong end of it so he's got to keep hitting them square and uh you know cody's a vet there's 53 holes left in the event i don't know about you i feel like that happens to me if i'm not confident in a putt but if I'm confident in a putt, those go in. Those go in. <laughs> it's a when you're going good, you're going good. Yeah. So this is hole two. This is a par three. Uh, it is 505 feet, but it probably plays closer to 350, 380. Yeah, something like that. There's a. You can throw a mid. You can throw a fairway driver. Birdie bid. Securely buy and sell new and used equipment on a site dedicated to disc golf. Whether you're a collector, custom dyer, or a golfer looking to shop savvy, check out birdiebid.com, a PayPal-supported site. What are you looking to do off this tee? The first, first and foremost, you need to carry straight for as long as possible. Um, going left early is really the enemy here, um, so I'd be willing to turn a disc over to the right side a little more. Um, I, I posited before this event that there would be more fives than twos among the open field. And I was incorrect in the first round, but correct in the third round. So very challenging, almost a bonus. And that's pretty much exactly what you're looking to do. Yeah, that's layup territory. Any Anything else is just gravy. Right. And Sam goes mid-range but leaves it high and inside. And like we're saying, that's going to be a very challenging spot. Yeah, if, if you push down far enough and go left, I think it's fine. But where he is, is you're not happy. Right. And this looks like a great move from Cody. Yeah, good drift. Holds that inside corner. And that's ideal. Park job. And that's a great shot after some unfortunate luck. Right, very good comeback. Sam forehand turnover to a downslope. That's such a technical shot to try to execute. And he does very well to put himself in about circle two. I feel like if you're that far back, those bushes always come into play. <laughs> All right, Zach and I are both going to try to take a little approach shot. No intent to make, just intent for an easy three. Yeah, a lot of these greens, if you don't put the disc down on the right spot, they get dangerous fast. Definitely, and some of that is that the, the holes are very new. Um, one, two, and three on the Lions course only went in this spring. So... I don't think any of us have played them in a tournament before, but you know we've got our practice play and our, our disc choices lined out. Yeah, we didn't even play it for VTI, did we? Correct. Uh, we had a very wet spring in Virginia and the Mid-Atlantic this, this year, so I think these weren't quite ready to uh, take a whole bunch of foot traffic. 
And we, we, when we mean they just got put in, we mean they went in with bobcats and carved these fairways. Yeah, new bridges, new new grass seed, new everything. Uh, and like, look at the look at the woods on the left and right here. That that big hill that we just played down, we're gonna go right back up. These entire fairways are carved out of thick woods. So, in addition to just like active design choices, the maintenance that that's required to keep this place going is insane. Yeah, I've never come here and seen it look anything other than immaculate, and I've always heard from Gary and Trey and Corey that well, it's not it's not quite where we want it. <laughs> so Cody grabs the box after that great birdie. And he's going to turn this shot over a little bit. You're certainly looking to push hard and flat up the hill. You can get a left finish, but only after you've cleared uh, the wood line on the left. Yeah, that the stuff on the left is the same stuff going down the previous hole that you just don't want to go into. Right, Insta-6. And that's great. I'm thrilled with this. Um, that's pretty much ideal. Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm, I might have actually thrown it too far straight and not quite enough left. So now I'm a little bit pinched off. Um, have to work a shot a little more than I'd like to. And where I go a little bit of a flex shot, Sam goes a hyzer stand up to nearly the same place. Very impressed with that. Yeah, what blows my mind about that is that's probably one of his D1s. And he just <laughs> flips it over like it's nobody's business. Yeah. So Zach from the middle of the fairway has to uh, lay up to the ideal landing spot. He's able to push a forehand in, into uh, into a throwable place. And you can kind of see where Cody didn't have the best drive, but... Staying on the right side of that fairway, if you make a mistake, certainly opens it up a little more for you. Right. He's able to kind of attack the green a little bit, but he's throwing so uphill that, uh, once again, that nose angle is critical. And Sam going to leak out to the left as well. I think that's something that commonly happens because when you're right there... You you think it's just a simple turnover, and I think it's the hillside mixed with it's a little more right than you really think. Right, absolutely. Um, and seeing those guys encouraged me to uh, over-exaggerate the Anheuser angle. And I get up to circle one. Very pleased with that. Zach able to park it on his third. Um, that's a wonderful scramble for his par. Oh, it's phenomenal. Cody tags a guardian tree. You'll certainly see that this basket is on a, a pretty severe downslope. So if you come up short, um, you know, you're you're looking into a lot of open air behind the basket. And that's a theme here. The the baskets are um, almost all cleverly placed. It's not just, you know, what's on the ground, but where it is relative to a drop off or trees or other obstacles. And that's a great putt from, from Cody. That's probably, what, 40, 45? Yeah, absolutely. Um, a real tester and kind of stressful putt for par. That was probably, what, circle's edge? No, not even. It was 25 at most. Okay. Um, just not quite enough belief so far. And this was one of the hardest holes on the entire property. Um, I believe there was one birdie by Tyler Smith in this round in the entire MPO field of, well, it was, it was a strong field. We had what, 40, 50 people? I think at least that. So we have hole four. This is another uh, par four. You're basically just trying to throw really straight out of that gap. Um, and then it starts to bend off to the left. Ideally, you throw it around probably 380, 400, and then you have a two, 250 foot approach. Right, since this 
is a downhill carry. You don't really need to be aggressive with your disc choice. You can kind of just let the downhill glide play for you. Cody goes vulture. And a little high, but still in a, a spot where he can approach. Right. I think the biggest thing is just get out of this gap. No doubt. That's absolutely smashed. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Um, there is some OB to the right, long, and left of this basket, as well as on the far right and left sides of the fairway. Um, for most cases, they won't come into play unless you really smash a drive. That's such an understable undertaker. <laughs> yeah, I've... I'm more worried about, like, make the initial gap, and then we'll figure it out from there. I like the play, though. I, I do something similar. Mm -hmm. Throw a hyzer flip, let it leak right, and if you come out, awesome. Right. I, I think the best gaps are on the right side, but it does make your approach to the green a little bit longer. And this, the video didn't really give what Cody was trying to do there justice. That is a very tight gap. Right. So I'm, I'm playing for the wide gap, just let a zone hyzer sail in, and that's backside of the circle. Cody needs to do work for his three, um, but he can't see the basket here. That's the, that's the trouble with being on the left side, I think. Yeah. It, it's difficult. There's one tree that you really need to wrap around or get inside of. I think he was throwing a driver, maybe. On that, um, I don't actually know. It kind of flew um, like a driver with the aggressive fade. So it looked like he was trying to wrap around. It's just difficult to really trust that it's going to do that. Right. So I can't stand those bushes. <laughs> yeah, they're inside the circle, um, and they seem to catch a lot of stuff. Sam tucks under one, and he'll have to work pretty hard for his birdie look. And that's just a routine forehand chip from uh, from Zach. Right. You saw he was next to a red stake. Those indicate 400 and 200 feet on all the multi-shot holes. And Cody's jump putting is firing early. Yeah, he's not necessarily getting clean off the tee, uh, but he's he's really making his putting work for himself. Very nice from Sam. I never have a straight putt when I'm in those bushes. <laughs> he didn't either. He's a, Sam's not a huge guy, and he was able to reach out about as far as he could go to his left. Well, I mean, I, I always had to turbo. Oh. <laughs> Probably another, what, 25-footer? Yeah, about that. Um, I was determined to you know, really drill it in there after the previous hole was... A total flop. And easy money for Zach. And that'll take us on to hole five. Um, this kind of plays parallel with hole four, so we're going to go back up the hill. That's 628, don't be fooled by it. We're going to play, uh, the effective distance is going to be well over 700, I think. Yeah, it's uphill. Uh, probably plays a little over seven yeah you're basically trying to throw to that bush that you just saw um maybe a little left and then find a way to get to the basket right there's kind of two main gaps that you can work with i think i believe the intended gap is uh kind of a righty hyzer and then you can be a little sneaky with what zach is going to do down the left it just tags that tree it, it it's certainly more guarded. Um, however, once you get past those initial trees, I think it's a little more open. Yeah, that's true. And and getting to the left side is a real premium here because it makes the direct approach to the basket much more possible. If you stay on the right side, you might get closer to the basket, but you'll have to work through a couple gaps, um, both you know, kind of in the mid fairway and at the basket. Sam's about ideal. Where you landed, I think, is ideal. 
Yeah. I, uh, if you could let me place it there, I would gladly take it. Cody's struggles off the tee seem to be continuing with an early left release there. But forehand force up to circle two. Very impressive. Um, I, I remember looking at Sam while he was lining it up and saying, he's a madman. Yeah, and, and that's one of the trees you have to beat. Yeah, for sure. Just tags. For but. sure. There is OB long of this basket, but I, it's not really necessarily in play. Right, it's probably 35 to 40 feet back there. It, it's really difficult to reach it. But the reason why they have OB back there, they, they put a parking lot there, as you can see, but they also have the um, the cabbage. I think it's a cabbage field. Uh, I think they've had a bunch of things. I know Kale has been in there previously, um, but it's, it's part of the multi-use operation of this land and farm yep uh gary hut is a nurserer mm -hmm. right uh and that's mainly what the the property is used for and and um so you're going to hear us constantly be thankful that we're that he one built the course and then two is letting us use it because those fields are what make brings them and brings them money and then that's why we're able to be here as well Right. There's a really neat history of this property. The Hutt family has owned this, these parcels since the 1600s. Um, and it wasn't until 2011 or so that Trey Hamlet approached Gary and said, have you heard of disc golf? And Gary kind of thought about it for a little while. He had been thinking about a hiking trail or a cross country course or something to, you know, provide recreation on the property in addition to the agriculture. And after thinking about it for a little while, um, he went back to Trey and said, well, let's do it. But we're not just going to build a disc golf course. We're going to build the best disc golf course. And it's been a 10-year vision of design and implementation and tweaking uh, for them to get to this point. And, boy, they've nailed it. Yeah, it, it's absolutely incredible. Um, the Lions, the layer which will play... Uh, in, in round two, and even the lambs, that, that is a uh, more beginner-friendly nine-hole course. Yeah, yeah. With three courses on the property, there's some appeal to everyone, and, and that's from you know the all-par three lambs to the advanced-level uh, layer course to this par 72 lions that is very challenging, plays around the lake, has you know lots of danger and lots of opportunity. Along with one of the nicest par fives I think I've played. Yeah, definitely. Um, the design concept here is that it's it's fairly straight with some uh, subtle shape to it, but it's going to pinch down, especially in the last 200 feet or so. Yeah, I, there, there's a couple different ways you can play this. I, I think I've seen everyone do, I think I've seen people do everything off the tee. I know I like going <laughs> fast. I go driver off the tee. Um, but it's really whatever you can throw real straight and stay in the fairway. Right. And there's going to be OB to the left side marked by an irrigation hose for the, uh, the agriculture fields we've talked about. And then to the right side is a pretty, sleep, pretty steep downslope and uh, very treacherous woods. The right side sort of plays as natural... Uh, natural OB. Right, you're liable to have to burn a shot just to get out of there. And that looks perfect. <laughs> that's If you're throwing the mid, that's exactly what you wanted to do. Yeah, I, I really like going with a, you know, a medium comet or other mid-range as Cody kind of turns his over. You have to keep it on a hyzer the entire yeah, way, but kind of standing up out of that hyzer for most right. of the flight. Cody goes with kind of an attacking shot, but can't find his gap and is going to be in maybe a worse spot to the right. Yeah, I think he had a fine spot to try to get out. I think he tried to go a little more aggressive, and now that's really not a good spot. Wow. 
Good almost initial gap. Yeah, you know, almost pushes it through. I like going high speed here just as like a, uh, I know I'm going to be a little off the fairway. And so I'd rather be a little left than a little right. Yeah, and no even throwing the mid-range, it doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. <laughs> it, The odds are you're going to have to scramble from somewhere on this hole. So I understand the incentive to, you know, if it works, you get an extra 100 feet. Right. And just to point out, I mean, that's that's all Cody had from there. Right, perpendicular um, to the fairway. But even even the distance driver play, I think, um, you know, I'm going driver and then stand still mid, stand still mid. <laughs> <laughs> and this is incredible. Cody burns his third shot to put himself at 400 feet and then gets inside the circle with a vulture. Um, his His scrambling game really continues to impress. Yeah, that's a wild shot because if you go right at all, you're really not getting out of that thing. No. Like the right side before was bad, but the right side near the basket is close to impossible to get out of. Let that leak a little bit. That's unfortunate given where my drive was that I'll uh, have to take a little poke for four, but odds are a five. Meanwhile, Zach with his third, his second had snuck a long way through the woods and he's able to <laughs> nearly ring it up for a skip at three. Good little touch from Sam. That's probably, what, 70? Oh, yeah, at One least. Time. About the edge of my jump putt range. Oh, Sam in for bogey. He kind of just had to hack his way through the entire left side so a bogey's pretty good given what he had to work through yeah and the difference between sam and cody there was cody just had a phenomenal fourth shot yeah that's that it's just not something you see people do <laughs> especially with a vulture because i was pushing four yeah 400 with a very specific shape and not a whole lot of height to work with. So shows off Cody's power, but also his skill. I hate this hole. <laughs> I, think, I think there's always a love-hate relationship with hole seven. Um, we're going steeply downhill, very aesthetically pleasing. Always seems to be some kind of headwind or crosswind that you don't quite feel until your disc is out over the water. Yeah, I, I, I don't hate this hole because it's a bad hole. I hate this hole because it is so <laughs> frightening to throw. Right, for sure. Um, slopes down from right to left, protected short and left by the water, and there's a drop zone if you don't make it inbounds on your drive. And it's really easy if you're a lefty because you just throw it into the hillside. I don't know if it's easy. I think it's just a little more natural for that shape. It's a good shot from Zach. And I certainly want to follow that counterclockwise spin. And I am more than willing to go long or right with this. Yeah, I think if you have a forehand for the righty, that's probably what you want to be throwing. Right. And please compare the level of effort it looks like I'm putting into my shot versus what Cody does. He gets pin high and it looks like he barely touches that force. It was a force? I think so. Yes, Sam's doing what I have to do, which is throw a very scary backhand. Common mistake to not quite trust it out over the water. So he's going to hug the inside. He'll get safe, but really no opportunity for a for a birdie look. He probably can't even see the basket from his place. Yeah, you're just trying to throw it probably a little short so it doesn't uh, slide off into the... into the. Why did he run that? <laughs> Tell you, telling you, Cody goes for a lot of stuff. It was 40 feet, so he's, he's making those 40-footers. Yeah, eventually, you know, you cheat death enough time, death comes back for you. Also from 40 or so. Unable to cash in. 
I sort of view this as a bonus, if you can get it. Good putt from Zach. I'd venture to say that nearly all the holes out here can be a bonus. Yeah. I, like, th there's, there's nothing out here that I walk up to and say, I'm absolutely getting a birdie, no questions asked. It's more like every hole is, I know if I execute a minimum of two good shots, I can take a birdie. There's a lot of contingencies involved in that. Yeah, that's a good point. Hole eight, par four. Yeah, it's, we're we're going peninsula hopping here. It's another treacherous one. Birdie bids competitive pricing means more money for you on either end of the transaction. With lower fees than eBay or Etsy, you'll get more for your money at Birdie Bid. Yeah, so you're, you're basically throwing, if you can get on that hillside, I think that's the ideal spot, but I think it's sort of random on if you're going to stay up there or not. And so I think more often than not, you're going to see people throw a little short of it. Unless you're a lefty, then you can try to bite it off a little more. Yeah, one, once again, it's a little more natural shape for that spin of shot, but it requires putting your disc out over the water. For backhands um, in the MPO field, I see a lot of mid-ranges that end up turned over a little bit, and that kind of makes the second shot not playable. You need to be like to the very left edge if, you, like that. Right. if you're on the flat, or you need to be on the hillside. And... Sam had catches some weird action from the wind and casts out to sea. Yeah, I got a couple swimming over there. Yeah, you and everyone else. So from the drop zone, Sam kind of forced to just lay up. Even and, the layup is scary. Oh you, yeah, it's terrifying. That hillside makes you frightened every time. Backhand, backhand to inside the circle. And you uh, got on top of the hill. That is very <laughs> difficult to be on top of the hill there. Yeah, I kind of don't ask questions. I just throw it, let it move right, and, you know, if I get in position, I'll take the putt. And Cody, a good layup to the front side. That makes his approach easier, but not necessarily easy. Yeah, I can see Zach's pulling out his really old, trusty felon. Yeah, this is this is pretty crazy to be throwing a flex forehand with, you know, a disc that's nominally stable, even as beat as that one is. Yeah, I was talking to him earlier about just joking saying this is a lefty hole, but I I think the approach to the bat the initial tee shot might be, but the approach to the basket I think shapes better for a uh, for a turnover righty. Um, I'd say it shapes that way, but it doesn't slope that way. The The forehand can certainly spike in here a little bit, and it might get some running action, but it won't cut roll the way a backhand could. Sure. So all four of us able to stay up on the top, which is key. <laughs> I appreciate the empathy from Zach for that. Yeah, it's, it's tough to make those circle's edge death putts. Yeah, yeah, especially with a little bit of a headwind there. Um, and straddling out to the side. That's, you know, that's on me. I need to make that. It, it's so easy for things to go very wrong on this hole. Right. And, and it takes very perfect execution for every, you know, in order to get your birdie, sometimes even your par. Hole nine, a very uphill tee shot. You'd like it to move a little bit left to right during its flight, and then we're gonna take kind of a, a right turn down a little tunnel into the basket. Yeah, I kind of view this as a miniature hole three. Yeah, I would agree with that. Kind of turning the opposite direction. And the second half of the fairway is much flatter. You definitely don't want to be left or right here, really. You, you really need to get to the top of the hill. Yeah, Cody's going to be down the hill. He's going to have to work very hard to get 
back to the fairway, let alone to the basket. It's not uncommon for you to see players leak left or hit a tree right, go really far left, and then decide, nope, retain. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Cody considered it, but felt like he could find an alley. Well, he's been scrambling well this uh, this opening nine, so. For sure, for sure. You can see him get out there a little bit, but not not up to the flat. Back to that force for his forehand approach. And look at that. I just don't understand how he can be off on his drives and then continuously put himself in, <laughs> in par position. Just padding those scramble stats. Zach tries to go over the camping area. And a very nice approach from Sam. Oh, that's rough. <laughs> Just a little sawed off. I, yeah, I have a bad relationship with this hole. I never, I don't think I figured out like where into the gap I need to push the disc before it starts breaking. And as a consequence, I always just, you know, either leave it too far inside or hit the back wall. Yeah, and, and we didn't talk about it, but one of the dangers if you push the back wall a little too far and then it kicks perfectly um, there is OB that separates this hole from hole 18. Yeah, true. Um, and it shouldn't come into play. A kick would be, you know, more likely if you were throwing a fast disc. Zach for his par to maintain the, uh, the tournament lead through this front nine. And that's pretty clutch. Yeah, I don't think you could have put it in a better spot from... 35, 40? Yeah, yeah. Just dead center. That's what these baskets like, definitely. <laughs> Little putting frustrations. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know what happened there. I, I don't know if I was thinking about hole 10 or a snack or, or just didn't believe in it. Good putt from Sam. Yeah, good bounce back from the previous hole. And and don't be fooled by these scores, you know, hovering around even or a couple down. Um, this course, the, the course record is not very far under par. No. <laughs> it, even is 1,015, 1,020. Yeah. Thank you again to our all of our sponsors, especially the Spotsy Disc Golf Club for sponsoring the Lions course and Knowledge Management Incorporated for sponsoring this tournament. Mike Evans for sponsoring this video. For Matt Hammerson, I'm Andrew Fish. See you next time.